my name is Greg Gorga. I'm the executive director here at the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. I want to welcome you all tonight. Uh, I want to thank the County of Santa Barbara Arts Commission and TV Santa Barbara. The County Arts Commission is, uh, helps us put this lecture on uh, they act, uh, on the, our web. Uh, they have provided funding so we can record these lectures, and it goes on our website, which is sbmm.org. And then TV Santa Barbara actually does the recording, and they post it on their uh, <coughs> schedule, too, so you can watch it on their channel as well. So thank you to all of them. So, Mr. James Bud Bottoms is a native Californian who lives here in Santa Barbara and has spent his life swimming and diving. His art education began at Jefferson Macomer School of Art in Santa Monica and continued at the University of California, Santa Barbara. He worked for many years as an art director at, for GE's Think Tank Tempo, but after a powerful dream he had in 1978 of a woman with a dolphin, he was inspired to sculpt and commit his life to marine mammal awareness and protection. Bud became committed to the envir uh, a committed environmental activist in 1969 when Santa Barbara experienced an oil blowout which polluted the ocean and devastated the local beaches, killing seabirds and marine life. Uh, and he was a very big part of that um, uh, environmental movement that came after that. In addition to other local environmental projects, Bud has won numerous awards in recognition of his art and his contributions to protecting our oceans. <laughs> How many have seen this pitch before? Raise your hand. You can go home. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you a, a detailed pitch tonight, okay? So you won't get bored. I'll keep you awake. And um, let me see here. This is all new to me. This is a new contraption. You know, this high technology really gets to me. I like the old carousel projector. Right, Art? <laughs> right, Art? The old one. Right. So I'm going to... Pardon me? <laughs> That's right. I know. I think I'll take a minute uh, before we show the slides to do the small scale stuff. But if I show you this, then you'll understand more of it when I show you the slides. Um, okay. But first I'll tell you a little bit about yours truly. So I came up from Santa Monica after World War II in the Navy, the last of the war, the last end of it. And I came up here and went to school. And um, I taught here, taught high school, taught jun junior high school. Some of you may have been in one of my classes. Um, then I had a large family of four sons. And uh, I told them not to go to Hollywood, but they all went to Hollywood and became actors. <laughs> That's Sin City, you know, so. And then, um, then after 30 years of marriage, that went under. And I lost my job the same year. So I was a desperate 50-year-old man, okay? So uh, I got a little boat and lived in the harbor for about five years. And in that time, I began seeing a shrink. Wondering what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Because here I was an old man at 50, right? So uh, he said, I'm a dream therapist. He was Dr. Crowther. I don't know if you, how many of you know him? Ed Crowther, you know Ed? He's a dream therapist, and he's a Jungian psychologist. So I saw him, and he said, uh, Bud, I'm a, I'm a Jungian psychologist. I believe in dreams. What you dream can come true. So he says, I want you to tell me your dreams. So I started dreaming a lot. <laughs> I'd write them down. Take him, take him the, uh, the dream, and he'd explain what, I, what he thought I was dreaming about. And that was great. And one night I had this dream aboard the boat of a woman on a dolphin just going sky high. And I'm going like, wow, that was one dream. That was exciting. So I told him, he said, well, he said, draw me a picture of it. So I tried drawing him a picture of it because I'd been an artist all my life. And it didn't work. So I thought I'd got to see her in third dimension. So I got some clay and I made a clay uh, image of her. And then my, my friend said, uh, I have some money. He said, if you'd like to take it to a foundry and have it cast in bronze, I'll pay for it. So I said, thank you. So we drove to uh, Berkeley, California, foundry up there, and they cast it in bronze. And I stayed around the foundry and learned about the process of bronze casting. And that was a great education. So then I, the day it was finished, I brought it home. And I'm driving back to Santa Barbara. I stopped in San Luis Obispo because I wanted to take it back and show it to my son. Look what I made, you know. And <laughs> 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 So I stopped in San Luis Obispo, and I opened the car door. It was an old beat-up BW bug. And I opened the car door on the, uh, on the passenger side on a shaded street so I get cool, cool off. And a woman, a one woman walked by the car, and she looked, and then she kept walking. I, I, I don't know who she was. 
Then she turned around and came back and said, may I see that piece? She said, what is that? And I said, well, it's a bronze statue. And I held it up and she said, oh, that's beautiful. Did you make that? And I said, yeah, I made that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> she said, is that for sale? I said, yeah. And I, I had no idea what that was. <laughs> I had no idea what it might be worth. <laughs> and so I didn't want to sell it. So I said, it's $3,000. So she brought out her purse. She opened her purse and wrote out a check for $3,000. She says, my husband's going to love this piece. And it was a woman hanging on a doll. You know? And so I'm looking at it, and I said, that's a great way to make a living. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Stop at the local. So with that, I came back to Santa Barbara, and I thought, you know, I better learn something about bronze casting. <laughs> so I went to City College, and uh, that's where I started my, my, my bronze casting. Prior to that, I want you to know that, remember Dr. Tom Payne? Do you remember Dr. Tom Payne? He was our boss at Tempo. I, was, I worked there as an art director for 16 years. And uh, in 69, after the big oil blowout, uh, I was really depressed because I had, the ocean was my refrigerator. I mean, I drove out there a lot for abalone, lobster, and scallops. And uh, when, that, when it was being destroyed by the oil, I thought, this is the end of the world, you know? And people sat there, sat, sat along the coast and cried because their ocean was finished for several years. And I did too. So we started thinking called goo, get oil out. And it's still going. <laughs> anyway, uh, when Tom Payne became, uh, after he was manager of Tempo, uh, jo uh, Johnson asked him to become head of NASA. So he went back east and became head of NASA. That was in 69. And I wrote him a letter. I said, here we are going to the moon. Our Earth is going to hell. You know? <laughs> And he wrote me a real compassionate letter afterwards, you know. He said, here's what you should do. So I followed his advice. He said, by the way, bud, did you know that dolphins have been on the moon? And I said, well, I knew that monkeys have been in space, but I didn't know dolphins have been on the moon. And he said, let me show you something. So he went to his memento case and brought out a, have you ever seen a submariner's emblem? It looks like a, a, a pilot's wings, except it's, it's a head-on uh, submarine with two dolphins on either side of it like that. It's like, like, like wings. He said, I, I put these in Neil Armstrong's pocket when he went to the moon <laughs> and came back. <laughs> so that was the story of, he inspired me to think about dolphins going to the moon. I guess that was part of my dream, you know. So, so anyway, I had to start him, uh, rely on him to say, I point to him and say, he was the beginning of my inspiration for making dolphins. Anyway, I'm going to show you how they are made from the, cl from the beginning to the end. I'm going to show you the small stuff. Okay, so you make a, you make a, uh, a model out of something like this is made out of clay, but of course it's going to be real smooth by you, the time you finish it. So there it is, there's a little dot. It was the first thing I made. And then from that, you make a mold of that. This is the lost wax process. And this, this process is a, is a liquid rubber that you pour over that model. So here's the rubber, and there's the shape of the dolphin inside. Hope you can all see that. Like that, that. So now you got a dolphin inside. And you open it up and take the dolphin out, set them aside, because you don't need that anymore because you got a mold of it. Then you, then you put an outer mold on it so it'll hold it, so it won't uh, wrinkle up on you. Like that. So now it's encased. You take out the, the model, you set it aside, you don't need this anymore. And then you, open, you have this little pour cup on top. See this little pour cup like that? You have a pork cup on top of that. And you pour hot wax inside of it here. And then out comes, and you open it up again, and out comes your wax dolphin. Now the, now the thing's in wax. And you put a pork cup on top, like this one. You dip it in wax as well. Dip that in wax and put it on the top like that. So now you have a pork cup and you have a dolphin in wax. But now we have, we have to make another mold. The next mold has to be able to take a lot of heat. So we dip this in ceramic shell every day for about a week. Ceramic shell is like a pancake batter. It's sand and water and flour. And uh, you, so you, throw sand, you dip it in this slurry. And you throw sand on it every day for about a week until you have it all coated up with a ceramic shell, <coughs> which looks like this. This is the ceramic shell. And then you, but you've got to get the wax out if you're going to replace the bronze. So you turn it upside down. And you still have the cup on it like this. And you heat this, you heat this up, and the, the wax melts out. That's the lost wax process. 
Now I can, <laughs> it's not really lost, is it? <laughs> but the, the wax is gone. So then you turn it right side up like that, okay? Now you can pour the hot bronze inside. The bronze will probably heat up to about 2,020 degrees. Pour hot bronze in that cup, fills up uh, into this shell. And then you take a hammer and you bust off the shell. That's why this guy's in, in all busted up like that. You bust off the shell and then out comes your bronze dolphin. Heavy. So there he is there. And the cup's cut off and that's recycled. And then you just do the refinishing on it with, with the sandpaper and whatever the guys like to work with in the shop. And you put all three together like this, weld them all together, and you have three of them. And that's the fountain. <laughs> so now you know all that. You can all go home now in your ovens and make, <laughs> make one of these. This base is interesting because the base, the base is a cave painting, too much cave painting. It shows four dolphins going around a circle. They said that the, the center is, the, is Polaris, a North Star. And they said there, is, there are celestial dolphins in the sky, four of them. And they circle Polaris. And they call the dolphin aliquoi, which means go around, protect, go in peace. So with that, that's four, four dolphins circling Polaris. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and the fountain base is shaped just like the fountain. Uh, that fountain base is... Uh, Tra Do you any, any remember Travis Hudson up in the Museum of Natural History? He gave me this. He said, what? I said, what is that? He said, that's a Tuchayat stone. It's an iron concretion. It's really iron. Falls out of the sandstone over on the Channel Islands. And he said, the Chumai said that that's their upper world. And the ring around the middle is the middle world where you and I live. And the bottom uh, circle is the lower world. So if you drill a hole through the middle, it keeps our three worlds in balance. So the fountain is shaped after... It has a dome on top, that's the upper world. And the middle world's here, and the lower world's there. And there's a hole in the middle where the water comes out. It keeps our three rows in balance. Now you know everything I know. <laughs> here's, a, here's a little two child stone with a hole, hole in the middle. Okay, let's talk about the big ones now. <coughs> and show you this all over again. Okay. I think it was 1973, 73, there was a big fire. It burned up the, uh, the uh, restaurant and a lot of the wharf. And the wharf just remained dormant for many years after that. And the men's garden clubs uh, volunteered to keep the uh, garden out front of the, uh, uh, the wharf. So that was there for many years. Then about 1980, the, the city said, well, we're going to, we're going to build a fountain there. And uh, how, how many remember Louise Lowry Davis? Okay, she, she said, this is, this is a friendship fountain. It should be called a friendship fountain. And so she gave the city $15,000 and this drawing and hired a, an architect to do a friendship fountain. So there's St. Barbara. And they, they took several years uh, trying to raise the, the rest of the money for the fountain. And they couldn't do it, so they gave Louise her money back. <laughs> and... Uh, and, and, and hired another, another sculptor. And then, they, and then they had a contest. The city had a contest. They had a contest for uh, uh, the fountain. So people from San Luis Obispo to Santa Barbara, uh, there were like 26 designs submitted to the city. And this one won, won the prize. This is a, an architect up in uh, San Luis Obispo. He wanted to look like, kind of like the old mission with water running over the sides. And, so, and they published a picture of this one in the, in the newspaper. The people didn't like it. <laughs> Outspoken Santa Barbarians, right? <laughs> they didn't like it, so they wrote letters, hundreds of letters to the, the editors. We hate that. We don't want that. So they said, and then the city threw up their arms and said, gosh, we've had three different, art, three different uh, sculptors. We've had Louise Lowry and I think, uh, yeah, there were three other sculptors who submitted pieces. And they all got turned down. So they said, we're tired of all this. That was years in the, in the, in the coming and the making. So they said, we're going to give the whole project over to a, somebody else. They can, they can deal with it. They gave it over to the flower, to the uh, uh, committee for uh, the fountain uh, that raised the flowers out front. So it was Admiral Tom Long who took over. So he gave them all the, uh, 
So the, the go ahead on that. And uh, so I was at City College at the time, and uh, I, sub I submitted a piece. My, my teacher said, why don't you enter a piece for the public light, uh, for that fountain in Santa Barbara? And I said, oh, come on, I'm just a, I hang up the tools in your class. And, you know, <laughs> he said, why don't you take that piece there uh, on the front there and, and submit it? So I did, I submitted this piece. And then they, uh, they uh, asked the city of Santa Barbara, all the people to come into the public library and vote on the piece they liked best. There were 26 designs, and this mine was one of them. And the people chose the dolphin and the whale's tail. The whale's tail, I thought, yeah, let's make something big. We're going to make a, a blue whale's tail, like 16 foot across. It'll cover the wharf, you know. <laughs> and you'll be able to drive underneath it and get your car washed. <laughs> so they said, too big. So they said, we'll go with the dolphins, but uh, not with the whale's tail. So my heart was broken, of course. But anyway, moving along, uh, I did a lot of research on dolphins and people and found out that it, the Greek, in the, the early Greek days, it shows people riding dolphins. And, and, then, and then today, people still ride on a dolphin's back. And the dolphin comes to you, and, and it will nudge you, and uh, some dolphins will, and you can climb on their back. I did that in, in Ireland, Dingle Bay. <laughs> Only one dolphin lives there. He's been there about 20 years. His name is Fungi. <laughs> and he comes right to you, and uh, he wants you to get on. So that was really something. I, they, they were interconnected. Like John Lilly, who was, the, who was a doctor, once told me that dolphins were like 30 million years, they evolved 30 million years before humans. And I'm going like, well, they must know more than we know. <laughs> then, then I heard the story of the Rainbow Bridge. And uh, it goes something like this. Uh, the outer rim are chilicote seeds from Chumash. They planted those. And Hutash was their, their earth goddess. It was like an Adam and Eve story. And so she made the first two human beings out of the chilicote seeds, a man and woman on, on the Channel Islands. And then uh, uh, it became very crowded after a while. So she made a rainbow bridge and told the people to cross over the rainbow bridge, but don't look down. Uh, here's, this is Grandfather Sky Eagle. Um, he was the uh, elder for the Chumash, the, the local Chumash. Uh, not, they, they, these are the coastal people, not the people in the valley. And uh, they're, the, they're called the Kobahi Chumash, and they live on the coast here. And here he is at, at the Cold Spring School telling the story of the Rainbow Bridge and how she warned them, warned them said, don't look down or you may fall in the sea and drown. Well, some of the people did look down, and they fell off the Rainbow Bridge into the ocean. Look, at there's one throwing his tail before he hits the water. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they, they believe that, the story goes, is that uh, the people who fell in the sea, Hutash has a big heart. She couldn't stand to see them drown, so she turned them all into dolphins so they could swim. <laughs> so today, the Chumai say, the, the, the dolphin is our relation. So they bless the dolphin. Okay, back to making the dolphin fountain. There I am doing a wax like this little wax here. Make it out of uh, plastilino, which is a wax you can buy. It's an oil, oil clay. So I made the three dolphins. And uh, after that, after the making the little three dolphins, that's what they call a maquette, a small piece. So it's, it was only eight, eight those were eight inches. Um, that's, a, that's how big it was, in wax. And then I cut it up. Uh, so I could make it bigger, because I got the commission. Then I got, they said, yes, we're going we we're to have dolphins. So I cut it up like bread and had cross sections of it. So now I knew how long it was and what the cross sections were. I did that at the high school. <laughs> then I went down to, uh, down to Marine Land at the time, and uh, there was a dolphin there, and the, the trainer could whistle, and she, the dolphin would come jump out of the water and come sliding up on a plastic and I would do all the measurements, all the cross measurements, so I knew exactly the width and the, the length of the guy. There we are taking measurements off him. And then he jumped back in the water, swim around, and then come back and pose for me. And then uh, I was working on my, this was me, <laughs> a hippie. And uh, <laughs> there I was <laughs> carving my first doll, and I had, I made it out of, a, 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 I think that was made out of plywood and chicken wire, and then covered it with Bondo and then sanded it all down so it was nice and smooth. 
So once I had the, that, that had the once I had the model, um, we uh, covered it with uh, fiberglass, make it really strong. And then I took it down down on Haley Street, and uh, the color. One of my old students was a painter, cars. So he gave a nice pa smooth paint job, so that real real slick like a real dolphin. And then we made molds of those. those these molds are made of fiberglass. So there are two of my teachers, and. Uh, they showed me how to make a fiberglass molds of the dolphins. Instead of plaster of Paris like this was, or rubber, it was fiberglass. And then I, uh, I put the third dolphin in there, which was a baby, so I, I did a little study about baby dolphins and saw their size and shape and how their little forehead is a little fatter and their nose is a little shorter, just like a real baby. <laughs> and then this is making an armature. It's like, it's like our own bodies. You have to have a real strong backbone if you're going to cover it with clay or whatever. So that, so we made a, an armature for the baby dolphin out of steel. And then we poured it in two-part foam. You, a lot of you guys have, may have used it for making, fix, fixing fenders or, or making your boat float. <laughs> so you just pour in a two-part foam and it expands and then uh, it goes to, fills up that box. From there I could just tear off this cardboard and carve a dolphin shape, which is very fast and easy to do. Next, we put on some shims, top and bottom, around. once I covered that dolphin with the same clay that we used here, made a real smooth dolphin, and plugged in some ball bearing eyes, eyes for it. And uh, the shims are going to be, uh, we're going to be able to take off the plaster Paris molds, you see, off the sides, off, off the belly and the flippers. So that's, that's me with a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that went. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then uh, Joanne and uh, helped me uh, put on the plaster Paris on top of that that uh, model. Now we're going to have a plaster Paris mold. There it is, same as the one over here. <coughs> Except we didn't use rubber; we just used plaster Paris. So there's our molds for the baby, and we had the molds for the big ones. And with the molds all made, it's pack them up and go off to Berkeley, California, and off we went. With, with the models and, and the molds. <laughs> that, what year was that? Probably 81. I was living in uh, Rattlesnake Canyon, up at the end up there, in the old Schofield house. My son had bought the Schofield, the old Schofield house, so he let me, he let me uh, use the, 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 barn, the barn, well, the uh, garage, and um, let me work out of the stable down there. And now, once the, once the foundry, the guys filled uh, the, uh, the, the molds with wax. And uh, they can't be solid because they weigh too much. So what you do is you shake the wax around inside the mold, then you pour it out. You wait a few minutes, then pour it out. And what's that happen? Well, the wax sticks to the sides. And, it, and you sort of wait a little while, and then it becomes about a quarter of an inch thick. Then you dump it all out. So now you've got a shell of wax. It's like an egg shell. So out goes. Most of the wax and what's left is about a quarter inch. So the big ones are always hollow. If, if it's bigger than that, that dolphin there, more than an inch, then you just go and make them hollow. And that's how you get that hollow one. So now he's uh, putting on the sprue system. The sprue is that cup on top, and then you, those are channels that go down. So all this is going to be reversed in, in, the, pl in the plaster Paris or in the shell. So you see those, those uh, sprues that go down the sides of the dolphin? What, uh, the, the bronze will be poured in that cup on top, go down those channels and feed back up. And then those little tiny lines on either side of the tail are air vents so that the air is pushed out. So you see a cup on top, like the head, you see the head's been, uh, and then and the spruce system is, is the inside of the head there. On the outside, when it's long like that, you can do it on the outside. Now, now we take those same pieces and put them in the shell room. I was just telling you about that. Now the shell room is a, the mixture is being mixed up down there in that big, the big barrels, and we dip the pieces of wax in that shell for maybe a week and then throw sand on them until they become dry and white. That's what's what we have here invested. They're invested in ceramic shell. <coughs> now we put the, all those shells in the, in the uh, oven, and the wax is melted out, and the wax can be reused again. So what you see there is in goes the, the uh, shells and out comes 
the empty shells. And this one we, we're going to put the, we're going to put them in the in a big barrel of plaster Paris because we're kind of afraid the shell is so thin that we it would crack and blow it apart. So we we invested it in a deeper in a deeper barrel of plaster Paris. Ordinarily you don't have to do that, but in this case we did. And there goes the shells inside a big oven and it heated up and the wax melts out and the wax can be reused again. Now we're going to put the shells in a pit where we're going to pour the bronze. So we had to dig a hole in the ground, put in the shells, and then uh, bring on the bronze. The bronze is, looks like gold, and it's heated up before. It, and bronze has a tendency to collect water, so you have to dry out the shell, uh, dry out the uh, bronze before you put it in the oven. Okay, now the crucible is hot, and we're it's hot enough. It's mol molten now. We can pour it. I just want you to make sure you've seen, you've seen what the guys are wearing. They're trying to protect their bodies from splashing bronze or whatever's out there. Now, Piero is, me is measuring the temperature, and at 2200 degrees, it's ready to pour. So in goes the pour, and into the cups. Each one of those cups has a different, a different piece of a dolphin in there. So they were pouring, the, and then, now they're all protected, and they're pouring the hot bronze. And then the, out comes the investments, ready to open up and see what we've got. And in the meantime, Grandfather Sky Eagle had sent me parrot feathers from the south and eagle feathers, uh, eagle feathers from the north and burned sage. So every day I was, every day of the, of, of the making of the fountain, I was going around blessing all the workers and the burning some sage around them. They liked that. <laughs> so Grandfather sent this up to, to bless the dolphins. So we're opening it up now, see, what we, see what, what's inside. Out comes the first, first part of the baby dolphin. And what was, what was wax is now all bronze. But it has a lot of ceramic shell on it, so it has to be cut off. And the bronze is now cut off, and the bronze is recycled. So the, what was, all that, all that uh, system you see with the, like with the plumbing, now you see it, so it's, it's a nice solid bronze. And then they're drilling out the ceramic shell and uh, we're ready to put the pieces back together again. Before we put them back together again, we have to polish them up. So there's, there's a, the head is all finished there, ready to go, and the guy is still polishing and working on the, on the finished uh, product. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> I got a newspaper from the, from the Santa Barbara News Press that said that uh, the city council and I decided to go along with a fountain down there and to kill the dolphins. Well, uh, I was uh, deep into it, and I thought, this can't happen. The Chumash people had filled the city council and had got what they wanted. They wanted the dolphins. And I was all for it. But a very wealthy man from Hope Ranch in Khashoggi, as a matter of fact, put up the first million and said, uh, and had this model made, and uh, the city council bought off on it, and right in the middle of the cast and it's finished, in comes this thing, and I'm going like, well, so I went back, called the Chuma, I said, we've got to go back to city council. So they came back in and flooded the city council and fought for it, and uh, we went back to the dolphins again. <laughs> <laughs> but there was gonna, it was going to be a $5 million project. They had to take care of uh, uh, the rest of the corners, but that was it. That was a, that's what it was going to be. That's, that's the newspaper, <laughs> and that's my dolphins. <laughs> 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 There's the article. I, could, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, now the time came to put all the parts back together again because the parts had to be smaller than, so that a man could lift them and put them in the ceramic shell. That's why they're cut in many little parts. So you can see there on these quarter-inch bronze is, is being weld. See the little weld marks there? And it'll be, ca it'll be put back together again with the same bronze that we cast in. So you'll never see a seam line. And there's a... Here's Greg. He was a diver. Up and he, he taught diving at City College. And he said, hey, bud, how are you going to hold that thing up? And I said, well, I used a nail, you know. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. He said, that's a 1,000 pounds of bronze. And he said, it has to be held up. And it also ha has to be stressed out to hold another 1,000 pounds in case four or five kids decide to crawl up on top of it. So uh, I said, well, OK, well, we'll, we'll go with that pin in there. So he's. He said, uh, okay, it's going to take, I've got to figure it out. It's going to take a five-inch stainless steel pin clear up the back and down the head of that 
one the female dolphin who holds up the family. <laughs> so I said, no, five inches, if that tail would be too thick, no way. So he came back with Inconel, which I found out was 65% nickel, very expensive. But we got the pin, and we, we found a machine that could bend it. So we put that in, in the tail, and she holds up uh, the entire family. <laughs> Just like for real. <laughs> and then, and then the, here's Piero doing the final, the final bit on the dolphins, which was the patina, the coloration. And uh, because bronze is about 95% or 90% copper, uh, it's going to turn green in time, usually. It's like the gutters on your home, kind of give that nice little rich green. But we can hurry it up with, by using cupric nitrate. Cupric nitrate is copper, only in a solution. So that's what he's doing here. <coughs> and then, off to Santa Barbara, but no fountain. <laughs> we didn't have the money to make the fountain, so we ended up having the dolphins, and we were able to end this. Museum of Natural History said, well, you can place them at the museum until we can find out where we get the money to, to build the fountain base. So there they stood for the next year um, in front of the Chumash uh, uh, Museum, which is kind of neat. My friend my, uh, Jim McMenamin made a drawing of, of what the city wanted. Well, they said, okay, well, you can have the, now you've got the fountains, but now it has to be Santa Barbara. It's got to be water. And a, and a Spanish, it has to be Spanish, so a Spanish fountain and full of flowers and so on. And I'm going like, you know what? This isn't Spanish. This is for the original people of Santa Barbara. So we fought that problem. We finally got back to the original Chumash thing. That's when I got that Tuchayat stone and, uh, and presented that. And I gave it to Gil Garcia, who was the architect. Anyway, prior to all that, Grandfather Sky Eagle came down to the site and called the dolphins. That's grandfather. And he, he pointed four different directions to call it, calling the dolphins. This is, this is really hard to believe, but, it, but it's true. He, here he is calling the dolphins. In the following few days, in came four people from the Chumash, uh, local people, who did the dolphin dance. And they danced for a couple hours. They blew whistles, like dolphins whistling, and they tapped sticks, like the, like the dolphins clicking. And... Uh, Guess what happened? Four dolphins, four bottlenose dolphins came into the harbor. And my friend Mike Maropoulos was going out fishing that day. And Mike and I, we dove and fished in Santa Barbara for 20 or 30 years together. And he, he couldn't f believe it, nor could anybody. But it was in the news press and also the museum. Okay, then um, we needed the money. And, and then once the dolphins arrived, they came in scores after that. Emily DeWare, she lived down at Miramar. Uh, she was a very wealthy lady, and uh, one day she asked her nurse, she said, if you had two uh, things you want to see completed in your life, what would it be? And the nurse said, well, I'd like to see the, I'd like to see the, the um, um, Statue of Liberty finished, and they were refurbishing it. And so she sent him a large check to help finish the, new, uh, the Statue of Liberty. And she says, you have one more wish. <laughs> She says, I, since we've had all these dolphins here, it's really lifted my heart. And they come by every day, down by the Biltmore. And so she said, okay, they need some money to finish, the, to do the fountain. Yeah, they need $85,000. So she said, let's see that it's finished. So she wrote a little check for 85000 bucks. <laughs> That's Emily. Meanwhile, she, she uh, told her New York jeweler, make me a gold fountain, <laughs> gold, a gold pendant. Really nice, with, with diamonds in it. <laughs> Throw that in there. <laughs> so we had, the do we had that uh, Tuchayat stone, and I we gave it, and, and, and the Gil Garcia did the drawings. He did the, arch the architecture on it. And so it came out just the way I gave it to him. It came out with the upper dome, the middle, and the lower part. So there they are building the fountain. And then, and, then, uh, I, and then I had the cave painting that showed the four dolphins circling Polaris from North Star. And we, we had that cast in bronze, and uh, we put that in the fountain on the north side as you look at it. And it was interesting because 
I had found this other, this old coin from 500 BC somewhere, the Greek days where they say it showed the same thing. Four dolphins circling humans. I thought it was a really interesting uh, connection. That's pretty amazing. Then the big day came, and uh, here's the pin sticking down there, so it's holding up the, uh, the thousand pounds of bronze dolphin. And there's Gil and, and I, and that's, that's me when I was like, you know, 55. <laughs> <laughs> 1985, July 1985. That's when it was. That's when it was fine. And look at that thing grew out on my head. Isn't that cute? Uh, <laughs> little palm tree. And then this nice lady brought brought leis from Hawaii. So that was part of going around the world. And there's grandfather, and the coat loda, my spiritual leaders during this whole thing. And without them, I don't know what I would have done because it, it, it was too much. And that's and here we are, July. 15th, I think, 1985. Meanwhile, Gil, Gil said, you know, I'm president of the uh, Puerto Vallarta Sister Cities. And he says to, uh, to make this thing complete, let's, let's make one in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, our sister city. And I said, okay, uh, that's fine with me. So, he, so I said, if you'll pay my... Uh, he's, uh, there was no foundry in Puerto Vallarta, so I found out. There was this guy who had a little boat yard and he was, making, uh, he was making boats back there and repairing them for a hotel in Puerto Vallarta. So I arrived with my, br my, my big moles and figured, all right, we're going to go biz here. Foundry. This was the foundry. <laughs> a couple of teenage kids and uh, Octavio. And so here I was. He said, senor, I can do this. And so I said, sure, okay, okay. Let's do it. So we got to work. And uh, first of all, I said, no, we need some wax you know, to put inside the molds. No problema, senor. So he got some beeswax <laughs> and some beeswax, yeah, and uh, paraffin, and mixed them together. And so that became our wax. So the kids, we painted the inside of the molds with the wax. Instead of pouring it in and dumping it out, we opened the molds up and painted the inside. And then we had no... Uh, uh, investment. So he took sand and with resin, you know what resin is, and he mixed sand with resin and it would get hot and go off in a minute. So we covered these uh, pieces, this wax, with instead of ceramic shell, we had shell, but it was made of resin and sand. And it would go off in a few minutes. Instead of waiting around two or three weeks, we had it done in a day, parts of it. So here he is mixing the mixing the resin, and you should never touch this stuff with your hands, with bare hands, but <laughs> he did. <laughs> anyway, there he is, mixing the resin and the sand together. Became a great, inv great investment. And put it on, putting it on his hand, with his hands. So then we had it all covered up with the, with the ceramic shell. The wax is all covered up now. And that's me adding uh, some more sand or something. It was real rough. Then we ran out of sprues. We didn't have enough sprues. So he said, there's a box over there, and it's got some foam in it. So he cut the foam, these long strips, and that became our sprue system as out of foam. Because what would happen is you pour in the hot bronze, and as it went in, then it would melt out the foam. So you could you'd get the same effect if you had the wax. <laughs> oh, these ingenious guys. And there he is, covering up the... Uh, foam with this ceramic shell base. Now, I said, now what about bronze? <laughs> we don't have any bronze, Octavio. He says, no problem, senor. <laughs> he says, bronze is copper, right? Yeah. So we got lots of car radiators. <laughs> so a car radiator is all copper. So with, uh, then the neighbors brought everything they had in their yard, in their bathrooms and kitchens, whatever was left over. So this is what we had. That was our bronze. <laughs> and we melted, what was nice, we were able to melt it down. And um, uh, of course, we, would, we didn't always get the same uh, portion. So sometimes the dolphin would come out yellow, sometimes it came out brown or green, whatever, whatever the middle was. What else? There's, a <laughs> there's Octavio, and there's Gil Garcia came down. He added the faucet to our crucible. 
we had to go to Guadalajara to get a crucible. We got a crucible, and I said, yeah, we got this crucible now to heat the bronze, but we don't have any fire. We don't have something 2,000 degrees fire. No problem, senor. So he goes up, uh, up the tree. Do you see that surgical tube coming down that tree? There's a bucket up there with petrol in it. And the petrol comes down, the, down through the hose, down, and they dug a, dug a pit in the ground. And then uh, lit, lit it on fire. And then, but I said, we've got to get it hot. No problema. <laughs> My wife has an old vacuum cleaner. Turn it around. Instead of sucking, it starts blowing. So we had a vacuum cleaner motor <laughs> blowing on this crucible, getting it up to 2,000 degrees. <laughs> and the neat thing about this was is that uh, there's a lot of slag. You know what slag is? Yeah. It's leftover stuff out in the metal, like chrome and paint and so forth. So he said, cerveza, senor, beer. So beer bottles. Throw the beer bottle in the crucible. And the glass melts and collects the slag. And you dip off the slag. So you have a pot of slag like this, but more cervezas. And then uh, <laughs> cleaner the bronze. So that, then we had that. So after lots of cervezas and, and lots of junk uh, from the neighbors, then we were able to pour, the, pour the, uh, the bronze. There we are pouring. You see these guys? Remember how I said, showed you how this, the other people were, were dressed in, 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 in fire, fireproof cl clothing? These guys had sandals, and, and we, we made long arms. We had these long arms made on this uh, crucible so they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't get burned. Anyway, the first one was the was a first piece that came out. We dug it out, and it was a loss. And there's Octavio crying because, you know, only a week from now we had to present it to the city of Santa Barbara and to the Puerto Vallarta people. So we had, the fountain was being built, but we needed the bronze dolphins. So he's crying because we didn't, it was all, it, it, it had a bunch of holes and it didn't work. So we tried again. This time I brought down some shields <laughs> and things got semi-protected there. This time it came out fine. And there's, Two happy Mexicans right there, <laughs> <laughs> Octavio and his friend. And this piece comes out fine. So now we know the, the process. So now you can see that sometimes more copper than other times. <laughs> so you, this little baby dolphin is, you know, bronze and bronze and bronze. But by the time it's up there and in, in the air for a while, it'll look tur turn green like the rest of it. And here we are getting the putting the finishing touches on it, getting ready to pre present it the next day to, to the uh, fountain base. In the meantime, we had, uh, we had an exchange. Puerto Vallarta and Santa Barbara are sister cities, so every year they would send down uh, 15 kids from Puerto Vallarta to Santa Barbara, Hope Ranch, Montecito. In the meantime, these kids came from homes in Montecito, <laughs> <and> Hope <laughs> Ranch, to Puerto Vallarta where they slept on the ground and had many frijoles. And they loved it. I mean, they didn't want to go home. They were so happy. <laughs> so anyway, a great exchange of students. That's what we do with our sister cities. We exchange uh, kids and games and all kinds of stuff. So then uh, we didn't have Inconel, that super-duper pin that went in the tail. So I had to come up with another design. So I figured out, you know, these, I could stand these dolphins straight up, one on top of the other. And then the weight is straight down, so I won't have I won't need that strong pin to hold them out at 45 degree eight degree angle. So we had now, so we placed one dolphin on top of the other. So these are the dancing dolphins of Santa Bar of Puerto Vallarta. So a new configuration. Once you're in this configuration, we bought them where they were like. Then I said, then I told uh, Octavio, Octavio, how are we going to get the bronzes <laughs> down the beach? <laughs> no problema, senor. My cousin, he's got a truck, you know? <laughs> so we loaded him up in the truck, but it wouldn't start. So, <laughs> so and the streets in Puerto Vallarta were all cobblestone. Yeah, you know that. So all the neighbors came by, and they, as usual, you know, manpower. <laughs> so there we are taking the, the, the new dolphins to the beach. So, uh, 
Here's Jean Graffy. She was pro tem mayor at that time. And there's Gil Garcia and myself, and the mayor of Puerto Vallarta, and the governor of Jalisco State was there, and about 5,000 people. And the night before, the whole town of Puerto Vallarta turned out and painted the, painted the street curbs and trimmed the trees. They were all working all night. Because when you have a fiesta in Mexico, it's usually three days. One day to get ready, next day the fiesta, third day rest up. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are there celebrating the, the fountain. There they are in Puerto Vallarta. And the same, you see now they, they made the fountain after the same plans, but they hand, hand made this one. There's a, now the mayor said, where, he, we asked him where should we put the fountain? And he, he said before, he said, in front, of, in front of City Hall. So there was a, there was a restaurant there, uh, you know, a bamboo one kind of. So he said, take it down. <laughs> so down went the restaurant and up went the fountain in Puerto Vallarta. And I think they built, they, they moved it again last past year. Because every time there's a new mayor, he can do what he wants with the city. <laughs> OK, now our, our oldest city is Toba City, Japan. Now this is the fountain. I wanted them all a little bit different. So here we are in Toba. This is like, let's see, this is like 10 years later. This 85, yeah. So this, yeah, 2005. So they made it different. So uh, the Rotary Club of, uh, of Toba City, Japan, uh, sent us the money to make a dolphin fountain for them. And uh, so this is the fountain in, in Toba City. And my wife and I just came back from Toba. She'd never been to Japan before. And I wanted to see how the fountain was holding up. So the mayor of Toba heard I was coming and said, hey, he could stay at my house for two nights. So that was great. And then his brother allowed us to stay at his home for two nights. So we had a fantastic time in Toba. That's the only place we went in Japan, just that one town for, for two week, a week. It was a great fun. There's a daytime. And, at, and this at Toba is the home of Mickey Moto Pearl Company. You, you ladies have probably heard of Mickey Moto Pearls, right? Well, there, so I said, you know, because we're next door to Mickey Moto Pearl, how about a big pearl in that Toba, in that, in that fountain's mouth? So they had a great big pearl made and put it, in, it was not real pearl. So they put it in his mouth. So at nighttime, it, it's parked right, well, this ship is now gone, that, that ship from Brazil is gone. But this is how it looks at nighttime. And the, and the water lights up, and they have all these lights on that turn, the, turn colors all night. So it's pretty pretty. Okay, and then the Dingle Bay, Ireland. Dingle Bay, uh, I was went down there by accident, and got off at Dingle Bay and, uh, in this little town. This is like 2000, all close to 2000, 1999, it was like. And they went to Dingle Bay and swam with fungi. And I said, this dolphin needs a, tro uh, you know, a monument. He's such a great dolphin. His kids love him, everybody loves him. So I had another dolphin made here in Santa Barbara in the Laracata Courtyard. It looks like this one. You'll always see children on it. So, so, so my, my foundryman and I went together, and because Dingle Bay didn't have any money. So we went together with his help and my help. We made a fountain, and we said, now, just have it. Uh, not a fountain, but a, a monument. Have it, uh, the, the Irish people send, send it down. So they sent an airplane, and a guy paid for it, and they took, they took this guy down to Dingle Bay, Ireland. And if you're ever there, you'll see this, this little character out in front of the, uh, the boats that take you out to see Fungi the Dolphin. Man, there's some, just some extra stuff. This is a little boy, Joy, in, in Lara Cutter, in, uh, I mean, Sriders Hospital, Los Angeles. And that, that, when I, that happened. Uh, that was interesting how that happened. When I was in Puerto Vallarta, a doctor from the States was there pick, finding children with bent r r arms and legs, and he, he was collecting kids to bring them back to have them fixed. And he said, uh, hey, you know, I'm at the Shriners Hospital in Los Angeles. Uh, how about making a fountain for our, our, our hospital? So this is one that I did for them. So life-size little boy and two dolphins. And there's one I... There was a competition to do, um, not a real competition. Poor, uh, Long Beach was refurbishing their, their, uh, their city in, on the waterfront by the Queen Mary the station there and also the aquarium. So uh, another guy and I were competing for the same piece. They, they, they selected me and this other fellow. And the, they finally chose me. Hey, 
that is. So this guy is 20 feet tall. And then this is for Pierce Brosnan in Malibu. He lived nearby and his wife passed on uh, some time ago, cancer. And so he wanted some, a memorial for her. So this is the, like the one at, in, at, at uh, Malibu. We have one here on the, on the cliffs out here at Santa Barbara. And it's being refurbished. Right? Yeah, it, it broke. Because uh, what happened was, being close to the ocean like that, it was made of concrete. And uh, the one in Santa Barbara and Lower California is made of bronze. But concrete, some, I guess some kids were dancing on the sides of it and it cracked. And then the water, the moisture from the, the ocean got inside of it and rusted out the armature inside. And so it broke. So uh, I just said, look, uh, I'll give the mold to a guy in Ventura who, who makes uh, these big uh, cast concrete pieces. And I said, you know, because Mr. Peterson, who was the owner of uh, La Arcata, he was a nice guy. and He wanted this, he wanted a painted like this in his shopping center. So I made the one in bronze. And then, I, and then he said, no, the city should have one too. So he, he said, we'll put one out there on, on the waterfront. So I said, okay. And I went out there with the city one day and we're walking there with the, they were to place this piece. And the lady was with us and she, she was with the city parks department. And I said, well, we could put it right here and you'll be able to watch the dolphins and the whales go by up on the mesa. And she says, I've lived here all my life, and I've never seen a dolphin. <laughs> and I said, there's one. <laughs> At the very moment, out in the kelp bed, was this <laughs> dolphin going by. <laughs> so we put it right there. <laughs> this is another project. Let's see, what else have we done? Oh, here's the last one I did. Uh, this was a... a do you remember the Alaska air crash down off Ventura? Yeah. This is a monument for them. And all the people's names are around the circle. There's, I think there were, uh, how many people? 80? 88 people, I think, something like that. And so all their names are in the circle here, around there. And every year the people come down from uh, Seattle. What happened was we did this uh, uh, a, a sundial because the plane hit the water, I think, at 334, something like that. Anyway, the sundial points towards uh, Polaris North Star, and the shadow falls at the right time every day at 434. And, and, and so uh, it's a reminder of what the airplane went down and lost, they lost all their relatives. So they come down every year and they shine up the, the, uh, the, fount the uh, monument. And there's four, three dolphins going up the base. You can just barely make them out. Those are common dolphins. And you know, I went. I was supposed to make a little talk about the fountain at the unveiling, and I went to the museum and I said, you know, it's going to be at Port Wainimi. What does that mean? It's not Spanish, that word. And uh, and one of the uh, one of the gentlemen at the museum next to me said, who are naming? That's Chumash. It means the resting place. <laughs> I said, why is it called a resting place? He says because. That's the shortest distance between the mainland and Anacapa Island. And he said the Chumash would row their canoes, their, their uh, tomals, back and forth at that site, and they rest there in the sand dunes. That was why it's called the resting place. And I was, this broke my heart when I thought, you know, the name of this place is the resting place. And uh, when they went out to pick up the salvage, this is another little story. They picked up the salvage from the wrecked plane, was about halfway out towards the Anacapa. And in the salvage, they picked up uh, a little canister of 35 millimeter film. Remember those days when they used to come and film the film? <laughs> and they developed the film. And the, the, this group of people had been to Puerto Vallarta for a vacation. And they were flying back to Seattle when the plane had trouble over uh, Anacapa. And but when they started to turn around, the plane did a nosedive. But they picked up the salvage and they had this little canister of film and they developed the film. And on the film was a picture of this, 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 this the lady who was on the committee to choose this, this monument down there. It was a picture of her, doll, of her daughter sitting on the fountain in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> Last picture she ever had of her daughter. That was pretty <coughs> mar remarkable. Uh, inspiration is everything in an artist's mind. So uh, when uh, Fred Banco passed on this past year, uh, I brought out, 
I brought out the original dolphin and whale that I made for the, the, the maquette. It's a large piece. Uh, I thought, you know, this is a, so I made this little thing here. It shows the, as you walk in the, the harbor here, you walk down this path here, and right next door is the Maritime Museum here. So you walk past this grassy spot, and I thought, you know, it'd be great if there was a whale still there. We have these blue whales that come out in the channel here, and Fred was in a run of introduced me to the blue whales, and I thought, okay, with the blue whales here, and you could still walk them to the water. See, the water comes off the back of the tail like that. And in here, you, you have a, a, a fountain, and then this water is recycled it back in the pond again. It falls over here, and you can walk under a blue whale's tail. Whoever did that? <laughs> so that was a. I, I, is that, I have a, a, a board here with names on it that, who like the idea, so that if we ever go forward, <laughs> we have some names. So if you like the idea, of that thought, you just you can sign that. Uh, then this piece here, you know, as you walk in, there's a there's a rock on your left hand side. <laughs> it's perfect for a sea lion. So uh, and, and Peter Holworth is at the Marine Mammal Center, head of that. So I I always want to do something for him. So I thought, you know, if we could raise some money sometime, we can put a sea lion on that rock, and have the Marine Mammal Center down here. And that's it, folks. <laughs> Okay. Well, I thank all of you for being here tonight.